Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, with this lecture, I would like to start talking about trigonometry. Um, usually, I'm emphasizing that mathematics is more abstract, if you wish, um, kind of a science or a knowledge or whatever. Um, it's more about mind rather than the real things which we are dealing with. Granted, mathematics um, really started uh, its own existence from some practical problems. Um, however, contemporary mathematics is an abstract uh, kind of knowledge. Um, trigonometry is something which is definitely um, having its roots in some practical problems. And before I talk about like real trigonometry, um, which is like a strictly mathematical kind of a uh, subject, uh, I, I will talk about some practical problem which uh, people were facing some time ago, I guess, which led to the development of trigonometry uh, as a separate uh, branch in mathematics. Uh, so it's not like a definition or theorem or anything like that, which I will talk about today. It's uh, about some practical uh, situations and maybe a little bit of geometry to justify the existence of trigonometry as a separate branch. So what kind of a practical problem um, we might actually think about um, led to the development of trigonometry? Well, I'm sure there were many. I, I'm just kind of fantasizing what can be the problem which led to trigonometry. Here is, for instance, a, a simple example. If you have some kind of a mountain, it has certain height which nobody knows what exactly the height is. Um, and we are standing here on the ground, and we would like to know the height of this mountain. How can that be done? Well. Obviously, you can probably go up the mountain and use your GPS positioning system or something like that. Well, it was not available at the time. Um, plus, if you go up to the mountain, you still don't know how to measure your height, right? So, here is the way how people actually um, tried to solve this problem. People knew how to measure the distance, so let's consider this distance is given let's say A, from this particular person standing, watching, looking at the mountain. Also, people knew how to measure angles. So, if you remember, um, the angles can be measured by degrees. If you have full angle, it's divided into 360 degrees. So, this is 90 degrees and this is 180 degrees, and this is 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. So they can measure the degrees of this particular angle. Another measurement unit is radian. Radian is an angle which has an arc equal in length to the radius. So this is the angle of one radian. So, no matter what the measurement is, whether it's a radian or it's a degree, um, we can measure the angle. So, let's consider that we have this angle. Let's use letter 5 for this, okay? So, we know this particular distance to the mountain, and we know the angle we view the top of the mountain. Is this enough to find out the height? Well, in theory, if you remember um, the, the course of geometry, these two characteristics are sufficient to construct a right triangle, which means that, yes, in theory, if you can construct the right triangle by using one catheter and, and an angle, it means this is somehow defined. 
But let's just talk about practicality of this. Practicality is that you cannot really construct it. It's not a piece of paper or anything like that. So still, you have a problem of measuring this particular height. But here is what um, uh, somebody who really understood the geometry of that thing offered. Let's have a, a rod or a, a stick or something much shorter than the length of the uh, mountain. Now, if I will position it in such a way on the same line that I view these three points on the same line, and I know the length of this particular shorter rod, and I know this distance, let's call it C. What can I say about these two right triangles? Obviously, they are similar. Now, similar triangles have proportional sides. So basically, what I can say is that B over X is equal to C over A. Now, B I know, A I know, and C I know, and that's how we can get the X. So X is equal to C times uh, no. A times B over C, right? A times B over C. So this is how we can actually find the height of the mountain. A and A, A can be measured. B we know this is the road which we actually have. We also can measure it, and C is the distance on which if you would install this rod B, it will uh, be viewed at the same angle phi. Okay, this is the beginning of trigonometry, and here is what I mean. Let's calculate B divided by C for all possible angles phi. Well, it's just 360 if it's degrees, or somehow uh, in, in decimals you can, have, you, you can have this ratio for one region, for two regions, or for 0 0.5 region, etc. So you can basically have a table of value of B over C, B over C, for any angle you have. Now, let's consider that B over C for any angle you have is tabulated somehow. So there is a table which uh, has the correspondence. Now, how can we construct this table? Well, basically we can have one particular B, one particular rod, and install it on one place measure the angle, measure the C, and calculate. Put it a little further, angle will be smaller, B would be the same, C would be a little bigger, so this B over C ratio would be a little smaller. So basically, moving B back and forth, uh, we can tabulate the values of phi uh, the values of this ratio for every file. Now, when this is done, when this is a table which contains all the possible ratios B over C for every angle phi, we can say, you know what? We can measure the height of any mountain. How can we measure? Well, very simple. We install our viewing device at some place. We measure the angle phi. 
we measure the distance A, then we go to our tables, for this phi, we find this particular ratio. And now, all we are saying is that x is equal to a times this particular ratio, b over c, which we can found for this particular um, angle phi. So this is all possible because the triangles are similar. So for every fixed angle phi, this ratio, B over C, is exactly the same. This over this, or this over this. This ratio is, is always the same. So this ratio can be considered as a, a function of the angle. So B over C, the ratio of um, uh, the catheters which is opposite to the angle to the catheters which is adjacent to the angle is constant for every angle uh, phi regardless of what exactly um, the size of uh, uh, sides of triangles are. This can be bigger, this can be smaller, but the ratio is exactly the same. This is the beginning of the trigonometry. So whenever people realize that they can calculate this ratio <clears throat> once and for all, let's say for every degree from 0 to 90 or something like this. So it's just 90 calculations. Okay, fine. They, they did it once. They tabulated. And after that, they can measure the height of any mountain, any tree, any building, or anything else using just a, a simple um, calculation. They have to know the distance from the observer to that particular object and the angle at which the top of the object is viewed from this particular thing. And the angle is also measured by somehow, but some, some device, obviously. Um, and then you just multiply whatever the table says for this particular ratio, for this particular angle, uh, by the distance to this object. All right, so this is the beginning of trigonometry, as I said. The foundation is a uh, similarity of all the right triangles which have the same angle, uh, acute angle phi. And now, um, people can actually expand it a little bit. Um, not only this particular ratio between the opposite catheters and the adjacent catheters is constant for a constant angle, uh, acute angle phi, regardless of how big the triangle is. But all other ratios um, of uh, different sides of this right triangle are exactly constant if the angle phi is um, fixed. Now, and here is something which they actually have defined as terminology is concerned. If you have a right triangle with uh, these catheters, and this is an angle phi, let's say. So people came up with the idea that any ratio between these sides, if angle phi is fixed, is actually also fixed regardless of how big the triangle is. As long as this angle is phi, then the ratio of A over B, A over C, uh, B over A, B over C, C over A, and C over B. All these ratios are constant for a constant phi, regardless of how big the triangle is. It can be this big or it can be that big. As long as this angle is phi, then the ratio between these sides all are depend, depending only on, on, on phi. So people came up with terminology. Uh, terminology. This thing, A over B, which is opposite cartridges 
um, to adjacent. It's called tangent. A to C is called sine. Uh, B, uh, B to A is called cotangent. B to C is called cosine. C to A is called uh, cosecant. And C to B is called second, if I'm not mistaken. So all these um, ratios are actually functions of the angle phi, of an acute angle phi. So whenever we are talking about, let's say, cosine of the angle phi, what does it mean? Well, in this case, it means build a right triangle with one acute angle phi and take the ratio of adjacent catheters towards hypotenuse. That's what it means. And regardless of what kind of triangle you build, as long as the angle is phi, this ratio will be the same. And that's why it's legitimate to call this ratio a function of the angle. So, these functions are introduced, were introduced in the beginning for acute angles in the right triangles. And again, there are some practical roots which we were talking about. Now, what's wrong with this definition? Well, it's okay for acute angles. No, no doubts about that. Um, the problem is that, um, well, the contemporary mathematics, again, is much more abstract. We are not only talking about acute angles. We are talking about any other angles. What if it's angle, angle 90 degrees? There is no acute angle of 90 degrees. There is no right triangle which has two 90 degrees angles. What if it's an uh, obtuse angle? I mean, then we are not talking about right triangles at all. And we would like to expand the functions, and there were certain practical pr uh, applications probably as well, but we are not talking about this right now. What's important is that this application is not really sufficient from a uh, mathematical standpoint. Since we have all different kinds of angles, um, we really would like to define these functions for all the values uh, of uh, the angles. Uh, well, let me just give you an example. When people invented square root, they knew how to make square root of positive numbers, but they were basically uh, completely helpless if we are talking about negative numbers. They didn't know what this is, a square root of minus 1. So they kind of expanded the repertoire of their numbers and added complex numbers just to be able to apply the same function, which is square root, to any numbers which we know. And they knew about positive and negative numbers. So it looks like they were kind of restricted by having square root only to positive. So they expanded the number, exp the numbers expanded this set of uh, different objects which they're dealing with. Same thing here. We have a function defined here for acute angles only. And this is actually not sufficient. Uh, mathematicians were always not satisfied with uh, these restrictions. So they always try to expand the definitions in as much as possible. So the next lecture, I will talk about the real definitions of trigonometry in contemporary mathematics. And that would uh, expand the definition of all these functions to all kinds of angles. But that would be a subject to the next lecture. Next lecture. Thank you very much.